Um, this has been a huge blessing to be here at Keller Williams the Lakes. I don't know how if you guys are blessed, but I am super blessed to be here. You guys are all wonderful. Like, you don't even understand. <laughs> um, today, I'm going to show you how we, as the guitarist team, use um, command. Um, command has been like, I don't know, just very, a very great tool to use to keep us organized keep myself organized. I use, I'm a checklist girl, I'm a paper girl, like I need to check off um, tasks and opportunities has allowed me to do that. Um, and I have created it little by little and it's still a work in progress. So I'm just gonna show you how we use it. Um, I'm gonna guide you through um, command in the, um, the app. Um, I won't be able to like do, but I'm going to walk you through the process on how we, the guitarist team, use the uh, command and opportunities. Okay? Are we going to go with that? Yes. yes. And you guys are at over $90,000 a year that they GCI, correct? Oh, no, no, five now, right? Five. Yeah. They entered 105 GCI the first quarter of the year. The first quarter. Round of applause for that. To know how you get paid through opportunities. Yes. yes. Yeah? Yes. Yeah? Okay. So I'm gonna do that too, right? Um, so the way our team works, right, is that Hector and Aurora are prospecting the first three hours of the day, right? They're hitting the phones, they're calling, they're trying to get leads, and then the rest of the day I get to tell them what to do. <laughs> um, <laughs> so what is considered a lead? Anyone? Anyone that answers? <laughs> Anyone that answers? Okay, good. Um, to us, a lead is someone that shows interest and gives us permission to share their contact info with our lender, right? So they're ready to go. They want their, the lender to call them. Um, we send out a text message or email to Tano um, with their contact information, name, phone number, email, time they want to be called because some people just decide they don't want to be called until this time. And um, then Aurora gives, oh, did you guys, yeah, you're passing them out? Um, we have a buyer intake form that Aurora fills out when she's doing a um, call or a buyer's consultation. Um, and she fills it out as basically a questionnaire that she you know, gathers when she's having those conversations, right? Once she has that, um, she'll hand it to me. I, based on that information, I will create a contact within command. So that's where I jump in, okay? So, let's see. Okay, so everyone familiar with command? Who, who doesn't use command? in your commission and a contact when you close doesn't count. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well I recommend you guys use command. If you're not using anything else, use command and track your leads and keep yourself accountable, right? Oh. Use command. <laughs> okay. So, um, okay. So, everyone gives me the buyer and take form and I start with adding a contact. Okay, so if, when you open it, it goes to the home screen, right? Within the, home, within the left uh, menu bar, you have the contacts tab. Right, and here, over in the right top corner, you have the add contact. So I'm gonna add, uh, right, I'm gonna name it, end of test. Okay, I'm going to add their email. You're going to add in as much information as, as they give you, right? Um, and within that fire consultation form, I was trying to pull as much information from them as well. So I add in email, I add in their email. 
Why is it letting me? Three. All right, well, I'm gonna skip that. I had another phone number. Um, um, so it automatically defaults to your name. Um, keep in mind that you, if you don't have an admin, you're gonna be doing all this yourself, right? We are a team, so within the SINE, if I'm adding the contact, it's gonna be my name. It's gonna default to my name. If Hector's doing it, Aurora's doing it, it's gonna default to their name. So since we're a team and collaborators, I will add Hector and Aurora just so that they have visibility of this contact, okay? Tags, we use tags uh, for many reasons. One, um, we add a uh, buyer. If this is a buyer or a seller, we'll tag them as a buyer. We do the DD, DTD2, um, so we will put the um, initial of their last name, the first initial of their last name, um, and we have it in here somewhere. It's the T and the J. Um, if they're Spanish speakers, we'll add you know Spanish in there. Um, if we sent them to Tano, we'll we'll select Tano on here. Okay, and that helps you filter out your contacts for certain um, clients. So if you want to filter for all of Tano's clients, and you want to do follow-ups that way, you can do that. Um, more information, you're gonna add. Let's say, oh, it's echoey. If, let's say they have a spouse, right? So you're gonna add their spouse's email in there. I have their phone number. Oh, turn down your computer volume. Sorry, someone joined Zoom, so I had to turn the audio on. Um, okay. I hope that works. Yeah. Yeah. You should be good now. Um, I'll add their email and phone number on here. Their address. I'll add their address. Let's do. address here and I'll show you why um, let's see about if you know their birthdays later on we'll add the home anniversary when they when they sell or when they buy I'm sorry and then we'll hit create if it um, doesn't let you create it it's because there's already an address or email within the command yes well I just wanted to say that you can also add I'll show you those but you can also add their social media there uh, that's one thing that I do. I go to Instagram on my computer and I add the link and then I put the Instagram on LinkedIn. And if I want to see who they are, they follow me. I just click on it, it takes me right to the profile. Oh, cool. Yeah. Cool. Well, we'll add that to the list. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. Um, okay, and then we have our lead, right? Um, okay. Once we have our lead in here, I will, within the timelines here on the top right, you have timeline opportunities, smart plans pass. I will add an activity and I will write down any descriptions that Aurora put on the form, like they want a two-story, uh, three bedrooms, their um, max payment that they want. Fifteen hundred, right? <laughs> Everyone wants fifteen hundred as their payment. <laughs> yeah. So and then you can put like what it, what it was. You know, call. You can change the date. So I'll add that activity. Um, then I will add the opportunity because this by adding an opportunity, it pops up on another screen, which I'll show. But that's how I um, track all our leads. And, uh, and I'll show you when, when I'm there. So opportunity, we're gonna create that opportunity. Um, we're gonna, uh, opportunity type, this is a buyer, right? It's got the little asterisk, so it tells you you have to um, enter that field. Um, it already names the opportunity for you if you wanna change it to, you know, I don't know, whatever you wanna change it. On the listing ones, I change it to the address name. Whatever makes it easier for them. Um, custom tags. Here again, I add Tano's name, and then I'll show you why. Um, any other information? We already know when they want the estimated close date, which we don't. Um, you already know their budget, like what they want to buy. I leave that blank until we get the pre-approval back. Because if Tano says they're approved for five hundred thousand, I put five hundred thousand in there. 
Okay. Also, the commission rate, I always defaulted to two and a half. You can change that later once you get in the contract mm -hmm. and you know what that rate is, but it makes you put in a, a number. We're going to leave the opportunity phase and opportunity stages defaulted. I'll show you what, stage, what those stages are later. Here in assignee, I also add Hector and I add Aurora. Why? Because we want them to be able to see the opportunity as well. Yeah? You guys follow? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah? Any questions on just creating this? No? Okay. Wait, Brenda, the last one that you added was where? The last, the assignees? Yes. I added Hector and Aurora there because it doesn't, when it's. Because we have a team. Yeah. So oh, yeah. Okay. Just because we're, we're the team. And that's for them to be able to view it. Okay. A lot of you that don't have a team, it's just going to default to you and you just okay. classify it. Okay? So I'm going to add them back. Yes. Um, I had a question back on your I versus T and J. You said was, yes. What, what is that? That's for the DD D T D two. Okay. And so and we passed it out. So every day Aurora's calling our database based on whatever day it is. He's, she's calling all those. So she filters. Let's say today is D day. You know, for all the D's, and she'll filter the D's and then call all those yeah. clients. So, the, so we gave you guys a, a, a list of it, so I follow this calendar. The, if you follow this calendar to a T, you will, you will call each one of your people in your database four times a year. Four times a year. So I do my regular follow-up, I do my, my, you know, trying to find a lead, but this is how I make sure I touch everyone in my database. So this is the calendar that we follow, and so I just go filter and then I'll put uh, H, H and B, so like all week, I'm just working on touching all the H's and B's. Okay. All right. So we are gonna close. We're gonna create the opportunity. Another thing I do within the contact is smart plans. Do you, are you guys familiar with smart plans? Yeah. Smart plans. Um, smart plans. You can create whatever you want. Like you can create it to send out an email once a month, and then after a week, you send out a text message, and then it's just hitting your your clients at different stages in different methods. You can schedule a call, you can schedule an email, a text, a task for you to call to do something, send them a birthday card. So um, KW already has some automatic um, smart plans. For example, birthdays. If you know their birthday, put them on a birthday smart plan. If you know their anniversary date for when they purchased, throw them on an anniversary um, smart plan. Uh, we use the bi-weekly. Bi-weekly neighborhood smart plan. And what that does is Sometimes if we do multiple smart plans, I'll scatter them out so that they're not bombarded on day one with all these emails. Okay, I'm going to hit confirm. Um, I was going to say something. Uh, so then, you know, if you put them on the birthdays or anniversaries, right? Um, we do like like the Easter event. We did a smart plan for the Easter event to invite our clients. We created that one. So you can create them. KW has some that are already created for you. I suggest you use them. The bi-weekly goes off of their, their neighborhood. So when you put their address in there, it automatically adds a neighborhood to them, right? Based on where they live. And then the system will send them out an email. I think it's once, once a week. It'll send them an email, what's going on in their neighborhood. If there's a house for sale, if, you know, what the value is of a house. Or it'll send them an email once a week. So you want to stay in, in front of your clients, right? So that one's an easy one. Just set them up and, and go. Okay? Um, tasks. If you have a certain task that you need to be reminded of, create a task. You're going to assign it to your to yourself or to your app. You can put a date on there. You can put a um, a due date on there, right? Yes. By task, you mean like a reminder, like to call them in a week, or is that what you're saying? Mm -hmm. Yeah, anything. Like if you need to send them a birthday card, if it's not already on there, if you need to follow up with your lender, you need to 
up with this lender in two days because you sent them to leave today, right? You you want to you want to take care of that, okay? Yes. <clears throat> Good. You want to follow with me so far? Yes. <laughs> Great. Uh, let's see. Okay. So now, once we're done with this, we're going to go to the opportunities. On the left hand side is the little hand shaking. I don't know why, but that's the icon. Go to the opportunities. What is it? Let's do this. We're closing the transaction. All right. So this is our pipeline. So here you have your, your listings, your buyers, and your leases. We don't use the leases yet, but it's there if you guys just use it. We have our um, listings. So right now we have um, we have two listing appointments. We have um, an active um, an S active listing right now, and then we have one under contract. Okay. So within these, I'm gonna go to the under contract. We'll go back. Sorry. <laughs> To the right, it shows you the GCI um, if you enter the information. Uh, so right now, potential income is all, when all of these close, it will be 62,922. The probable income of those closing is 41, and that's based off of the default settings within command. I'm not sure where those are at right now. Uh, but I'm gonna show you on the buyer side. Okay, so the buyer side. Right, we have up here at the top, you have these tabs. They don't really look like tabs, but they're tabs. You got cultivate, appointment, active, and under contract, and close, okay? These can be updated. Okay. Mm -hmm. They can, right? Those uh, stages can, the ones within them. Those two, but you have to go somewhere else, right? Um, but with the, these ones, the sub, Categories are lead, application, pre-approved, and active with shopping. The way we use them is once, this is, right here is the lead. Where is it? What's my name? Here. So the, here's my, my test client, right? It added it to the Cultivate. So I'm gonna click on that. And here is all the information that we, we entered, right? We got the Cultivate, it's a lead, we, we got the Tano. I gotta add myself. <laughs> <laughs> but, okay, at a glance you'll see that, like, um, every Wednesday I do my What's Up Wednesdays. And what that means is I call every single lead on Wednesday. I call them, I text them, I leave them a voicemail to check on them. So all these under leads, I call them every Wednesday, okay? I will call them, I will add an activity to their contact to let me know what, what, I, what I did, and if I need to follow up with them, I'll add a task to follow up with them, okay? So what she, what she does is as soon as I give her that form, mm -hmm. she fills it out, and then it'll go into the lead bucket. And what's, what's really cool about this bucket is it has, um, it's kind of hard for you guys in the back to see, but it has this little box right here, and it, it's like a checklist box. So each stage is gonna update what the next step is for her to remember, because it's, it's a lot to remember. So all these people on here are people who we have sent to the lender, and then these are tasks of like, when do we have to call them back? Did we follow up with the lender? Did the lender call them? Like all those little things, like I don't know if it's ever happened to you where you're like, shoot, like, did I call them? Did the lender call them? Like, oh my God, like, or you sent so many and you're like, I don't remember what lender I sent them to or, or the lender will tell you the name and you're like, oh, so I don't remember that one, you know? <laughs> so this list right here is what tells us who is just a lead and said, yes, I'm interested. And then she'll kind of move it along the process. So on Wednesdays, we call it What's Up Wednesday. And that's where she goes into here and knows, okay, I need to call all the people who I just sent. I need to all, call all the people who apply. And you'll call all the ones who are already approved and the ones who are actively shopping to see if they need anything from us. But she's gonna show you like all the stuff in there that I don't touch, she doesn't, but that's basically the point of this whole screen right here. So let's say, thank you. So let's say Brenda Test um, spoke to the to Tato, right? Then I will move and she started the, op the process. 
send in her documents, Tana told the other actively in pre-approval. So I will move them from here to application. Okay, they are more than just interested, they are now motivated and applying, right? So I don't have any tests here in this section yet. Um, but but I will. Like there's there's so you I'll show you those check. So once they're done with their application, Tano calls us or emails us and say, hey, they're pre-approved. Yay, we're gonna move them to the pre-approved. Okay. I will open up the opportunity and update the information. So about when would be the close of escrow date, I like push it, like if they want, they're moving fast, I'm gonna put it 30 days out, just an estimate, that can always be changed. Um, I will add their budget here. That way it reflects on that homepage of the GCI. And then I will leave them alone. I'll go back. <laughs> I'll go back and now like now they're actively sending us home. So what we do is we create a text string with um, Aurora, myself, and the client. And we'll say, hey, whatever homes you're interested in, send them through this group chat. We'll, you know, make sure that, you know, there's no nothing nothing that would stop them from looking at the house. And we'll send them a payment, an estimated payment. And then they'll, they'll send them through the whole week, Monday through Friday. And um, so every day, like I'll, at the end of the day, I'll send our run payments for them. I'll say, hey, these are the payments. They're within your budget. Which ones do you want to see? Right? They'll say, oh, we want to see X, Y, and Z. Okay, cool. So I see they're motivated. They're, they're um, sending us houses. So now I'm moving in, into actively shopping. Okay? So now they're, I'm scheduling showings for them on the weekend. I was taking them out. Hector's taking them out. Um, and they're like, they're, they're ready to go, they're hot, right? So from here, um, from here, oh, hold on, there was a task over here. Hmm. This task is to prepare the buyer brokerage agreement. So I print that out for them for their first showing when Aurora sends them out, I give her the, the buyer um, agreement so that they can sign on their first showing, okay? Or that says, hey, meet me um, a few minutes early. I got some paperwork to, for you to fill out. They fill it out. They start showing houses, right? So now they're they're more committed to to buying, right? And that that task is there for Brenda. So like like just think like if you don't have an admin, you are the admin. So for for like that task, I don't ever see it as an agent. Brenda just like here get the sign, you know. Yeah. But for you guys, like if, if you don't have an admin or someone to do that, that task would be for you as a reminder. So that's why opportunities is so important because you would go into that pre-approved stage yeah. and look at who you need to get that buyer broker agreement from. Awesome. And that's just been like a challenge for us, which is why I told her like this needs to be part of our process because I never get those signed. So I just started doing that. So yeah, really in this um, cultivate section, that's the only task that I have set up because I know every Wednesday what to do. Right? I need a task for, for that. Yeah. Um, going back to your, when they're sending you homes and you calculate the payment, mm -hmm. what do you use to calculate their payment? That, um, I use Fidelity's um, website. Um, I can show you um, at a later well, that's time. The whole that's a class whole in itself. class in yeah. itself. I can okay. show you how we do that another time. Thank you. The shortcut, the lawyer, the lawyer sign on app, yeah. spreading your address yeah. information. Yeah. And I use, okay. we use the Fidelity app, and you know you got to know what the interest rates are for the day. You got to look up their taxes, property taxes. We go really detailed into their their payment because okay. we really want them to know like a realistic estimate but it's a realistic number so that they can stay within their budget and their qualification right because they can have a budget much less than their qualification or their budget's higher and they don't qualify for that you're like hey like that's above your budget that's above your qualification like that's another conversation that Aurora then has with with the client and keep in mind Brenda was like a lender slash loan processor like she had like we're blessed to have her because she has so much experience on that side so she can have a lot of conversations around payments and interest rates and stuff like that. So we're just left. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so from here, they accepted 
an offer, right? They, the seller accepted their offer. They're all going home. We're all going home. Um, from here, we're going to move Brenda into under contract. I don't use the appointment or active stage yet. Okay. From here, I move them right away. I move them to under contract. Okay. And we're going to go to under contract. And where'd she go? <laughs> I think it went under. Did I drop it? I dropped it too early. I think it's under peer approved. Look at that. Under contract. Go. Nope. <laughs> yeah, it went that time. This time it went. There it is. Okay. So now we're active in, in escrow. Okay. Um, these are the percentages up here, the 90%, those are the probabilities that they're going to close that reflects on the, the front page, right? That says um, your GCI and probable and, and estimate, or, that's where it comes from. That was just defaulted from this, we haven't messed with that yet, so that you can change. So what I did to create my checklist is within within this page up here at the top right you have edit stages okay these stages i created or adjusted right we have escrow disclosure scheduling uh report review contingency period and clear to close here under the checklist it tells you there's 12 items within the escrow stage 10 items here and so forth if you click on it it'll show you what all those tasks are which uh, i'll jump into the task section right now and show you that all these were just created for that buyer uh, because i moved them into that bucket so within the checklist i put roles right because we want the, we want to have this set up so that when i move on move up within the team when we want to you whoever takes my spot here it's, no, already, it's already done. We'll get you to that. A beautiful one. <laughs> <laughs> uh, got you. <laughs> 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 That's gonna be you. If you don't have a, a, an admin, if you're using a TC, that's what the TC does, right? That's what I that's what I set up. So if the next admin that comes in is not gonna TC, because I admin, I TC, I do a lot. Um, if, if that new admin does not TC, she'll, that person will know that's the TC's responsibility. If I'm not here for the day, I go to Cabo for the weekend, I take a few days off, and everyone's like, oh, what's going on with, with Brenda Test um, loan or escrow? She can jump in here and say, oh, let me check in with the TC because that's the TC's um, job, okay? Do you guys have questions on that checklist? Because that was huge for me because I'm telling you, I don't touch opportunities until she tells me to. So that checklist, she created it one time. So when you slide the little box over, that checklist automatically starts on there. So what I love about that is like she said, if she's ever not here because we don't touch the file very much anymore, and I need to know where her loan is, I can click on that checklist. And if it says agent, that's something I need to handle. If it says TC, then I need to check in with whoever's CCing that file to get whatever document or whatever it was. Um, but it's it's super cool because I don't have to like we as agents we don't want to think that much like we want to just do so that checklist helps you just do what's on the checklist and not think too much about why and who and all of that so, so that's why I love that piece so what does that checklist look like without your edits to it it's not checklist. It's not there. Oh, there's not. You, you, you make your own. Oh, okay. You make your so own. So some will not apply to you. Like, I'm very anal about it, and I want to check everything off. Yeah. I want to make sure that I do, because we're going to have a lot of escrows, and I'm not going to remember all of them where they're at. So I might jump in here. Oh, I just forgot to do this. I forgot to do that. You know, like, I need that. Many we're also may not. building it for the business that we want, not the business that we have. Right. Yeah. So always think that way. Like we're we're building this as if we're gonna have so many escrows that like I'm gonna forget. So I better have checked it. Yeah. Like, that's literally how we we look at our opportunities these days. Mm -hmm. 
So unfortunately, there's a little like challenging with command is that it doesn't assign it to me. These, as you can see right here, these are all the, the tasks that got assigned when I moved them into that stage. It shows unassigned, but it came from the opportunities checklist. So I need to remember to go in there and update all of them, assign them to me or assign them to Aurora, put a due date in there. That way they're they're within our list and our tasks to do. Okay. And that only apply to teams. Like if you don't have a team, obviously it'll just assign it to you. It won't assign it, it'll go into the unassigned, I think. So oh, just like that. So you'll need to either remember to go into the no due date um, button here, or, you know. Just check the no due date just, for your test yeah. and you'll be fine. Exactly. So I'm going to go back to the opportunities. I just wanted to show you that once it's moved in there, it goes into the test, right? And once I. It's a it's a lot, you guys. Like we've we've been using commands since day one, and we're, there's still a lot of things we don't use on it. We're just using it how it works for us right now. And there's I'm sure more ways and easier ways, but there's a reason why we're at the amount of deals that we have now, and it's because of the checklist that Brenda's created because we're touching people so many more times, and we're not like leads are not slipping through our fingers anymore like they would before. Like, it's the worst call when you make the call, like, oh, we already bought, like, blah, 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 whatever, or we just listed, or whatever the case is, like, this has helped us a lot with that. Um, it's just, just use it, I promise you. <laughs> yeah, you won't forget a lead. I mean, we made you 100K in three months, and I think I should use it, right? <laughs> so, um, once they're, you know, an escrow, then all the tasks, then we'll move to disclosures. Disclosures is, you, you know, you're sending out all those disclosures. Um, one of the tasks is that Aurora goes over the disclosures with them first before they get sent out. That way they're not shocked, what am I signing? Um, scheduling, you're moving them over to scheduling. Um, you gotta schedule the home inspection, the termite, um, order the home warranty if you need to do that. Um, then, you know, you're getting all those reports back, right? You got your termite, your appraisal, your inspection, you're reviewing those with the client. So there's tasks for, for that to remind us or remind Aurora to, to call the borrower, right? There's also the contingency period, right? You got your contingencies within within those, um, those checklists. I have Remove remove loan contingencies dates. You know how do you, how do you guys remember when your contingencies are due? <laughs> yeah. Well, I put it in here. I put the date it's due. That way, that task comes up and reminds me. Hey, that, that due date is coming up. I also add it to the calendars, but it's just an extra extra task to to mark off and uh, another reminder, right? Someone's up when the listing agent reminds them. <laughs> <laughs> then when all that's, that's up, you know, I, I followed up with, with the, lo the lender. Let's see where we're at with closing. I move up to clear to close, right? And there's tasks within clear to close. Can you move the Brenda one over so they can see, like, I mean, it's kind of small to do the Zoom, I guess, but. The scheduling? Yeah, so like, if you see, and you can't see, but on this one, it added 15 tasks, six, six tasks, and then if you move it over, mm -hmm. it four. adds four, so each stage has tasks, mm -hmm. so that way you as an agent can remember what are the tasks, when the, when the lead is on the disclosures part, what is the task that I need to remember, and you remember to review disclosures, and you remember to get them signed, and you remember, like, whatever. So you continue to move it along. If, if you just take time to create that checklist one time, yes. then when you do hire your admin, it's done. They just need to follow it. So uh, that's one of the, the, in my opinion, one of the things I love about Keller Williams is that they're always thinking with the end in mind. So like, you have if you have this already set up, you will build your team because you're ready for it. But if you're always working as a solo, you will stay solo. 
right? If that's your goal, cool, that's great. I would still use this because we can't remember anything and we're not here to do one or two deals. We're here to do a lot of deals. Mm -hmm. So this is a really, really great way. Just take the time to like, you don't have to work on this every day, but maybe, you know, once a week, take time to work on your business instead of in your business so that you have this set up. Because this, I'm telling you, there's no other way we would have got to where we're at if we didn't have the systems like this in place. So, it's, a one, it's a one time thing that yeah. benefits you forever. And if you're not using command at all, I know Kirsten is setting up command for people. So, if the one thing you take from this class is how to create an opportunity, we, when Hector, before Hector and I had Brenda, we just used the default opportunities that Command had and it was great. We didn't even know it did all this until Brenda's like, why don't you use this? And why don't you? I was like, girl, I don't know, do it, you know? But, like, but we were using just basic, whatever Command had and it was great and it's like super satisfying to like slide the little box over and put it in the clear world, like it's the best. So it's, it's really cool. Um, I, 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 I'm a huge fan. I, we don't use any other database, so I honestly don't have anything to compare it to. We're paying for this one anyway, so we're gonna use it. But um, it's, it, it works really, really well. And like I said, if you set it up, when you get your admin or whatever team member, they'll just jump in and know what to do, right? Yeah, and also when you click on um, this, the checklist up here at the top right, you can move them in be from the stages, right? The next contingency period, wait, hold on, back. Um, you can go back and, and through here to see if you missed any, right? Instead of going all the way to the task, you can you can click through here to see which ones you, you missed out on or you didn't check off instead of going all the way to the task. Okay. Um, cool. I think that is good for the opportunities part. Um, do you guys want to know now how you get paid? Yes. Okay. All right. <laughs> so Brenda test is it is clear to close, right? So now escrow asks for the commission's instructions to resign, the the distribution distribution commission disbursement authorization form. So you need the disbursement authorization form, right? <laughs> so you go to the opportunities and you go to the offers and commissions. Okay? You're gonna add your new offer. You could have done this at the beginning. Um, you, did this, the beginning. you did this last, right before you get paid, right? You yeah, you did this at the beginning. Uh -huh. I don't want to do that. Yeah, for sure. For sure. <laughs> <laughs> so the offer, offer date was um, last month. We're gonna say uh, the address. Um, we're gonna use that address. You're gonna add the parties. Um, the buyer, the seller, seller, oops. And you're gonna add the representative, the represent, associate's name, which is it's Hector's name. That's Hector. Right, and that's the only thing you need to enter. Well, I enter it all, but. Um, the, rep the other side, I guess that's a required field. Email.com. Then you're the other, the selling agent. So selling agent. No, listing agent. Listing agent. Okay. We're gonna hit terms. What were the terms? Um, sell price was three hundred thousand. They were putting twenty thousand down. Does that even exist anymore? Hmm. So total sale price is three twenty. They're financing three hundred. The um, earnest money was two thousand, and that's it. There, we're gonna go to agent analysis, and we don't use that one, so we hit save. So this is the offer. I'm guessing um, if it was listing, then you add different offers. That have this section used, you know, something like that. Uh, but we only use it for the one. So we're going to accept this <laughs> offer. <laughs> That's the only one. Accept this offer. So then, once you accept it, you're going to, if you need to make any changes, okay. you go to the manage commissions. You can have multiple offers right there in the tab. Like yeah. a little blue button. 
So here, um, they want the contract date. We're going to enter that in again. But last month, sometime. Yeah. Post date. Your commissions. You can change it here. Hit save. You're going to edit the agent. Because for me, it's going to default to my name. But if Hector was doing it, it would default to, to his name or yours. Okay, we are going to leave all that alone. We're going to hit save changes. And if that looks like it should be, then we go ahead and hit submit. I send Bailey an email with the commission's instructions already signed. Um, I send Bailey that with, with a note saying, hey, Bailey, um, here's the CI. I, I completed the DA within command. And then he'll send me back the form signed, right? That little, that little blue submit button, yeah. it's really important. It's very important. <laughs> <laughs> we need to push that. Don't forget to submit. the submit. Don't forget to hit the submit. Okay. If you are your own admin and you're collecting all the, the contracts from, from both sides, you have to upload them within the commands. So if you click the documents tab, it's going to ask you to pick your checklist type. Most of the time, it's residential, right? This is the buyer, so con consultation, there's nothing. Under contract, it automatically loads all the required documents that compliance needs. And you'll see the required conditional. Conditional is if it applies to your transaction, right? Um, down here, it has um, optional for any miscellaneous documents. Um, if they sent me a document that is not required, I'll upload it into optional anyways, just to keep keep it archived. Okay. Do you do this or is it a TC? I do it. Mm -hmm. I am a TC, so uh, this would apply. Like if you're not using a TC and you want to know how to do your own file, you definitely get with leadership and see like if they can teach you specifically on that. I think mostly everybody does. Everybody here is using TC. I guess. Yes. Yeah. 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 So then, then your TC would have to learn this. Yeah. Your, your TC would have to learn this. But the difference, the difference is like if you if you have a TC, they're doing this, but they're probably not messing with your opportunities. No. Like they're just doing what they need to do to get you paid. So the power and opportunities is for you to have a clear pipeline and you know where everything's at and you know who needs to be followed up with or not besides i mean again we don't use any other database this is what we use so like i know some people use other ones and maybe opportunity seems unnecessary but like if you're only using command that's how you would keep track of your leads if you don't like the little table that move you can have like a list of them too like i just i find it satisfying so i like it but um this is what your TC is learning how to do. So if you're one of those people, I'm not, but if you're one of those people who's like, I want to do my first file by myself, I want to do everything, I want to know everything. This is what you got to learn. Me, I was like, I don't want to mess with my first file, TC, here you go, you do it, you know? So it's, everybody's different. Some people just want to do that, other people don't. So um, that's why she just kind of touched on it. But this alone is like a, a class on its own because she tried to explain it to me. I was like, yeah, don't, don't even add that to your class. Because you can also DocuSign through through um, command as yeah. well, but that's, that's a whole other beast that I have to learn. You can make this DocuSign and upload it all correctly from there to here. Yeah, 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 yeah. So that's So once you have all those, you click the submit to MC, and then um, they will, Jacqueline will review, make sure you have everything. If not, she'll reject it and send it back to you and say, hey, I need this one. Same thing with clothes. So our buyers are using the under contract and clothes. Not that many, but you still have to, to complete. This section also submit to MC. Okay? Notice also on the close, no, under contract, you have your disbursement authorization that you have to upload in here too. And the commission's instruction. So that is that. Um, that's all I got, really. That's how you guys have any questions. So that's it. That's it. <laughs> yeah.
<laughs> Any questions on the operator? I'm only here to give the agent perspective because I don't know half the things she taught me. Yet. I only tell you what I use and what's helpful for me as an agent. Um, but do you guys? Yeah. Um, for the documents, so you're uploading all the documents that you're um, obtaining yes. that you need into command. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Fully executed contracts separated by name. They go into and they're all a little bucket. Photos, anything like that. It's whatever is required. So yeah. there's, there's okay. these little tabs say required, and some say conditional, and some say optional. So it's whatever is required. It, yeah. Conditional, it depends because each transaction is different. So they might have extra paperwork on there that you do need to upload. And then optional, if you do want to upload a picture, I, mean, I guess you can. But Like on the on the close side, you have to upload a conversations, right? All the email records. You have to upload them in there if you have text messages um, that you want to save as your as conversation log. You can put that in there. I have a question. Yes. So it, it, it's actually going to be that an opportunity. Uh, so I, I'm having a problem right now keeping track of my appointments because I schedule, let's say, so many appointments, but then you know, uh, I know I know that in order for that to be tracked as a kept appointment, I have to put the appointment on the date I had the appointment. So if a buyer cancels on me the appointment, command will still pick it up as if I kept the appointment even though I didn't do, I didn't even put the date. Are you guys having any issues with that? I'm not using that. We're not using We're that using part. Together? We're just using the, um, um, the leads. leads. We used to use um, it like that. We used to use it because I wanted to see how, because in 2020, I did like so many Zoom appointments like during all the craziness and it was a lot so I put them on there but I don't put the date for the same reason because they might cancel and reschedule so I would just move it myself to Kettle after my appointment. See, and that's the thing, you know, for me, even though it's not in kept, it's keeping commands, keeping track as kept. So I, I don't know if you put the data. No, no, no. His is not. glitching. I've already looked at no. his. That's why, yeah, the, which once you submit that request, they should be able to help you. Yeah, so I was always curious if you guys are having that issue as well. Yours is broken. Yeah, it's <laughs> yeah, no, we um we used to use them, but we stopped and we just now track. Like I only want to talk to serious people now. Like I only like we're we're paying her per hour, so I want her talking to people who actually said yes, I'm ready to go, and not like mm -hmm. they're flaking. I'll talk to those people, mm -hmm. you know. Um, so can you click onto it? So we we were using it like that's the default that uh -huh. command comes with. So this used to say appointment, this would say kept, that's mm -hmm. what your guys should say. Yeah. Yeah. And we changed it because it didn't work for our our way of running our business. So you guys can change it too. Like if our way doesn't work for you, you can change it to whatever you want. Yeah. But that was a good way for me to see like, oh shoot, I went on freaking 20 appointments. I only have two applications, like what's going on? Like it's a good eye opener to see that. And then I like to see the probable income and the like all that too. Now that we're actually filling out opportunities properly and we're only putting opportunities on people who are saying, yes, please have the lender call me. Yes, I would like an appointment with the listing agent, whatever. Now these numbers make more sense. Like, dude, in buyers, we have potential income of $220,000. If we were to get everybody close, close which you will. Like, that's crazy. So just seeing that is just, those are the ones I want to talk to. Like, I don't, I don't want to waste my time talking to people who said no a million times or call me back, call me back. I'm going to call to the ones who said, yeah, I'm getting my paperwork. How can I support you? Do you need to drive your house? I'll get your paperwork. Like, what do you need? Because like, I didn't hit this too you know what I mean? So that's why we use opportunities at such a high level now because me as a buyer's agent, especially, I was wasting a lot of time following up on the people who kept canceling or whatever now i got i got 26 people here who are going to make me 220 if i just get them closed All you're right. hiring right huh you're hiring? <laughs> <laughs> you're hiring. You're hiring. so but you, this was one thing to the next guys it's at the either. minute but if we could just share what we've done Not so far like it's helpful can you go back to the the lead application and approve like Try to write down the fourth column in Oh, yeah. It's this lead one? application pre approved and then act actively shopping. Oh, I like that. So I think uh, command has appointment.
kept. Appointment set. Appointment set. Appointment set. Appointment kept. Scheduled. Scheduling. Scheduling and then scheduled. Yeah, so that just it doesn't even make sense for us. So we, we changed it. Um, and then Brenda does her with the Wednesdays, right? So again, if you don't have an admin, you are the admin. So that's a good, and we got that from one of our old coaches because he does that. And he does not have a business in Texas. So he does what's up Wednesdays. So their whole team, all they do is follow up calls. So if you guys want to do that, if you have your opportunity set up realistically, then on Wednesdays, you can make all your calls. Hey, Morgan, you know. Hey, like, really, really quick, you guys are microphones? Are really, are you by a camera? Christina and them? Us, our mic on live, they can hear you. All these, your mics are super sensitive, so please minimize side combos so I can hear her. And people on live can listen, please. Really quick. Um, commenting on live. Sorry. So, so on like application, right here, her follow up call or yours, if, if you don't have an admin, would be, hey Morgan, we sent we sent your um or how did how did the conversation with Tano go? Oh yeah, I'm trying to get the paperwork, blah 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 blah. Like we're going through that process still, or whatever, right? Or hey, your your proof of hey Jesse, we received your proof approval, you know, a week ago. We saw have, have you have you seen any homes that you'd like us to show you? Blah blah blah. Or hey Jessica, um, Tano was supposed to call you yesterday. Did he call you? Like how did that conversation go? You know, like so th these columns kind of tell you what line of conversation you need to have with those people. Mm -hmm. Actively shopping, like, hey, yummy, like, I didn't see you sending me homes. Um, it's Thursday. I'd like to get so scheduled before the weekend. Like, what's up? You know, and it's a good way to also see motivation because if she stops sending me homes and stuff, then we might move her back to pre approved and stop wasting time trying to get things scheduled for her. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah. So that's what worked for us. But again, you guys can change these titles to whatever it is works for you. Maybe some of you are big on social media and you want to add something from social media on there. Like, I don't know, right? But that's not what we do. This is what we do. Is there any way you can show us real quick how to change the name? Yeah. Yeah. Edit stages. Mm -hmm. Edit stages. And right here is the little pencil over to the right. And you can change whatever the whatever you want it to be. You can also change the probability if you if you're really into the numbers and what the probability is that they'll that they'll close. I mean this was just defaulted to seven. Yeah, we haven't even messed with the probability thing yeah. at all. But because I'm if I can share, <laughs> Please. I can share something on, on the opportunities, it, it just goes back to, let's say, for example, you're a solo agent and you want to eventually get to a team. Like It just goes back to organizing your business to where you could eventually get someone on board and help you with that. Something as simple as, for example, myself, I'm guilty of that. When, when Aurora joined uh, my team, I, my emails were freaking, I had just a whole bunch of emails, I didn't organize them. So I could handle that when I had three, four, or five deals at the same time, but anything more than that, it was just chaotic to find anything. So just something as simple as literally organizing your emails and having like little uh, folders, subfolders for your transactions so you know, so you know you know, email comes in for this file, okay, I'm gonna move over here, I'm gonna read it, I've got to it. And that just eventually translating into this, which I, I had an idea what Brenda did, but now I'm like, I literally <laughs> learned a lot of this, this stuff about you guys right now. This is the first time I'm seeing it. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and, um, but it goes to I'm not a checklist guy, but this has, from my email to this, has made a big difference on what we can like this is. It's yeah. hard blowing away, you're going to get the laptop for sure. So start, <laughs> start thinking, like, you, you hear the term around, you hear the saying all the time, begin, uh, you know, start with the end in mind. And even, whether you haven't done a deal yet, or you, you know, you're seasoned agent, or whatever your goals are, I think just like, get organized is going to make it, make your, your life a lot easier. Cause if if I had like you say let's say you got, like, if I had a nine for we kind of forgot something, dude, I, I wouldn't even be doing real estate here. So I'm like, always bouncing back and forth, yeah. right? Different files, tech messaging people, but having these girls like do their thing has, has made wonders in, in the business for sure. Oh thank you. My biggest thing too is I used to be a lender, she used to be a lender, so lenders either love us or hate us. <laughs> because we're like, no no no. We sent it, you should have already called, like we're like that, so this way we know, like, okay, no, we sent it, you should have already called, 
like what happened did you follow up with them like did they turn in that paper you asked for because they said that they did and you're saying they did like, so this is how we're able to do that without like i don't remember every single file or sometimes they're like dude your buyer's not giving me nothing then i can Take jump back in and say hey like Thomas said you're not you're not giving me what he needs like do you want to do this or not right so that's why I personally love this as an agent because I'm having more purposeful conversations than I was before. That's I think that's why also we've been busy with the buyers because I'm converting them so much easier because I know exactly where they're at and I'm not like, oh shoot, I sent them like a week ago. Did they get to them? And then I finally call them and now they're cold and they're like, you know what? I'm like, no, whatever, right? We want to get them while they're hot. So. And I'm also documenting the conversations like in the in the timeline, right? If I get a conversation, if I get an email from Tano with an update, I'm putting, I'm logging it in here. Uh, lender update, this is what they said. And if we responded, this is what I said. That way it's, it's tracked um, and everybody on the team knows where they're at. And you, you, do you document the Spanish speakers? Yes, uh, and there's, there's a, a, tag, right? a tag for Spanish. Yep. We tag buyer seller D three two Spanish and the lender. lender. Yeah, which lender? Because we have multiple lenders, so smart. <coughs> yeah. Um, um. I don't know. I don't know. Do you guys have any other no. questions? It's a lot. I would just say. I would just say. You know, if, if I I try to replicate, no, I don't try. I replicate success. So I'll say that if if if, uh, if they're having this amount of success, and then I just learned something new right now, the last minute that she was explaining it, and I just copy that. So I'm just gonna copy that. <laughs> <and I'm gonna laughs> <copy laughs> because if, if 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 we don't put it to action, whatever it was just taught to us, it was just a waste of their time. You know. So I think that if we get out of here and you guys don't replicate that. You might as well, you know, just, just, just stay home. And if you guys want, if you want my checklist, I can, I will yes, share my yes, checklist. Yes, yes. So, I didn't make copies, if but. If you want, just send it to me, and then I can send it to the list that's here. Okay. Make yeah. it easier. Yeah. 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 There's plenty of business for everyone, right? Absolutely. We don't want a hundred of the deals out there. We're good. Like, it's fine. But, um, yeah, like, you guys can totally, like, rip it off. It doesn't, whatever. We ripped it off from someone, too. Like, that's how it works. She she created the tabs that made more sense for our business because she came in and was like, wait, why are you guys using this when you should be using this? And that's why she figured it out. Um, but we have been using opportunities, just not as uh, at a high level like we are now. So, and I'm not a fan of using different softwares. I want it all in one. So if I can maximize command to do everything, one stop shop, I'm down. And it saves us money. And it saves us money. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for coming. I hope I really, really hope you guys learned something. Yeah. Like it and yeah. the way and awesome. Thank you. they say copy those that are successful.